Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm going to be doing a series of portraits of actors in colored pencil on sandpaper. And this drawing of Kevin Costner as Robin Hood is going to be the first one. Let's have a look. I'm starting with an ugly sketch, but it'll do. And I'm going to talk about my materials first. I'm using Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils. And the surface I'm working on is a 1000 grit sandpaper. It's a waterproof sandpaper that you can buy in any hardware store. It's cheap, easy to find, and it works great as a surface with both color pencils and pastels. I prefer color pencils most of the time because they are great for details, textures, and things like that. Anyway, I'm starting with the background using a couple of different greens. The background is going to be an out-of-focus bouquet background with just a few suggestions of lighter and darker shapes in the back. So uh, the setting is the forest, that's why it's all green. And I use a couple of greens, a couple of lighter greens, the, the May green, and, um, and I also used a little bit of that darker green at the top. In addition to that, I'm also using a bit of ivory colored pencil, which is uh, like a light yellowish color on top of that green to create these round shapes, uh, which are supposed to represent the light breaking through the branches and the foliage. But like I said, no specific shapes, no uh, complex textures and details, just a blurry background, which will uh, which will not be distracting and taking away the focus from my main subject. I'm just blending that with a combination of blending stumps and brushes. Brushes are pretty good for blending but you have to be careful with them because I use stiff bristle brushes. Sometimes uh, if you uh, use them too much they can dig out that pigment out of the uh, tooth of the paper and uh, you end up revealing too much of the background color. So you want to make it smooth but uh, still retain the color that you want to that you want to achieve. I'm moving on to the main subject and starting to work on his hair. I'm going to be using a combination of black, some browns and some other lighter colors on top for the highlights. Now the colored pencil that I used here for the black is a uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos black colored pencil, but in addition to that, I'm also going to be using the Kohino silky black pencils. These are similar, but I feel they're a little bit darker, and I especially feel they are, I feel they are darker when I put them on top of other layers. That's why I like to use them in a combination with, uh, with the other Faber-Castell pencils. There are going to be some arrows here uh, in the quiver on his back. These are also going to be slightly out of focus, not much detail on them. But I chose to do some of them first because I normally work from top to bottom and from left to right because I'm right-handed. Now with colored pencils, um, smudging is not really much of an issue because they don't smudge much with charcoal with pastels that this can be a problem but with colored pencils sometimes you don't really have to stick to that order of doing things but because colored pencils on this surface tend to be a little bit easier to blend and a little bit easier to smudge it's probably a, bet, uh, a good idea to make sure that I work from left to right to minimize the smudging and to avoid spoiling any of the work I've already done. So the arrows uh, are a little bit out of focus, not much detail there, and just working a little bit with the background around them before I switch on to drawing the hair here. For the hair, it's very difficult to achieve uh, the exact same tones that you see in your reference photo, but you have to approximate. And uh, for the darker portions, I like to use simply a black colored pencil. Some people advise against that, but I think it works pretty well on sandpaper, especially if you work from dark to light. 
and with hair especially it's a good idea to work from dark to light you, you first put in darker areas and darker layers underneath and then you start layering lighter values on top and the colors that I used here were black and then I used some other browns on top the the lighter brown or the mid-tone brown I'm going to use for the most part is raw umber uh, or at least I think it's raw umber it's kind of like a lighter yellowish brown and I also, I'm also going to use some darker browns like a burnt umber I'm going to use burnt sienna for some other areas not on the hair and for the highlights on the hair I'm going to use some lighter colors like beige and even some ivory here and there anyway I'm moving on to the background on the at the top and on the right I'm going to do as much of it as I can without actually uh, without actually being in danger of uh, smudging anything so I'm just trying to work in that order from top to bottom and from left to right because uh, I'm recording top down and my uh, hand is usually resting on the on the paper and as you can see I'm using a piece of glassine paper under my hand to prevent smudging but uh, that can only help so much so it would be best if I could avoid touching the surface but here it's not that much of a pro problem like I said colored pencils aren't that bad when it comes to smudging even though they do smudge a little bit more on this surface and uh, this this surface, this sanded paper, it's really durable. It's, it can really take a lot of abuse. So there's really not much you can do to it to, to damage it. You can spit on it, you can scratch it, you can pour water on it and it'll still be fine. It can really take a lot of abuse. And that's one of the reasons why I like it. But the main reason why I like it is of course because it's a textured surface which allows you to create fuller, richer colors and it also allows you to work from dark to light which is what I'm doing here with this beige colored pencil you can see how easily I'm putting the, these uh, lighter marks on top of the darker areas which I've already covered with some brown and black so these are going to be the highlights in the hair the parts of the hair where, where it is a little bit lighter because it's facing the light source and it's kind of um, shiny and glossy I suppose I'm adding touches of other colors to it just to experiment a little bit to make it a bit more yellowish and warmer in some parts but I'm mostly going to stick to this combination of colors that I picked so far so um, one of the things that I've also noticed lots of flyaway hairs here at the top because his hairstyle is really messy in this uh, in this movie um, unlike some of the other Robin Hoods in in some other versions uh, where they uh, where the actors look pretty neat in comparison to this one so one of the things I've noticed is that the best way to work is to, to work from uh, dark to light because that, that way the lighter colors you put on top those lighter hairs which are sticking out and catching light from the light source uh, look way more natural. I zoomed in and slowed down a little bit as I'm working on the details now. I'm working on the uh, facial features. Uh, I'm starting with the eye on the left. You can see how nicely the highlight stands out, that catch light. Uh, I put down some white first there. Now, as I've mentioned, you can put lighter details on top of the darker on top of the, the areas of darker value but it works best if you put the lighter value first if you want it to be really really bright which is what I want with this catch light in the eye now the rest of the white of the eye is going to be a little bit more subdued a little bit darker and that's another thing that will allow the catch light to stand out um, so for the skin tone, don't ask me <laughs> about what I'm going to use for the skin tone. Um, I just 
pick a combination of colors that uh, that'll work for me. I'm not an expert on these things, but I think it'll turn out fine. I'm going to use a combination of burnt ochre, a cinnamon, and a, a light uh, red beige. And I may, uh, I may add some touches of other colors to that, but for the base color I actually started with this burnt ochre. And the reason why I'm using uh, this particular pencil, you can see that it's slightly different than the rest of the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils. That's because that's actually the Albrecht Dure uh, watercolor pencil, but I, I'm kind of running out of the Faber-Castell Polychromos one. So I had to use this one, and it actually worked fine. It has a very nice amount of pigment. It's the exact same color and combines well uh, with the uh, with the other pencils. So I really see no problem. I see no problem with it. It served well uh, for my base color. Now here, I um, learned from my mistakes in some of the previous portraits. I decided to put down the darker color first in those shadow areas and then as, as I was working with lighter colors on top of that they ended up looking a lot more natural because I often find that I I can ha create some ugly textures and some un unpredictable results when I put the lighter color first and then uh, try to create shadow areas on top of that so uh, this is a learning process for me uh, th th this uh, medium is um, something I'm still uh, I'm still uh, getting familiar with. I've done a lot of drawings on this surface but it, those were mostly uh, I don't know different types of drawings like landscapes and maybe some wildlife. Now I'm going to do a lot more portraits and this is where I'm really going to have to push myself to see what this medium can do and I feel like I'm already learning a lot of new things even with this uh, first portrait in the series of portraits which I'm going to do and there's going to be there's going to be quite a few of them. Um, these are uh, going to be done on a slightly smaller size paper. I don't know the exact size, size but it's a little bit less than my usual size um, which works for me because these uh, detailed drawings in colored pencil they can be very time consuming and colored pencils aren't that great at covering large areas anyway, so I prefer drawing miniatures and smaller, smaller size drawings. They, I think that colored pencils really excel at these smaller formats. I'm working on the eyebrows now, adding some touches of burnt umber on top of those uh, darker areas, and then just kind of blending uh, the various colors that I'm using for the skin mostly using the cinnamon on top of the burnt ochre and then the light beige on top of the cinnamon and then uh, for the brightest parts or the lightest parts of the skin like for example at the top of the forehead which is catching light from above I even used a touch of ivory colored pencil so if you're wondering, if you're using slightly different pencils, uh, by the way I'm working on the mouth now using some radish tones there, used, uh, I used a bit of Venetian red and some cinnamon. Uh, anyway, if you're using uh, a different range of pencils, a different brand of pencils, uh, you're probably, they're probably going to have different names and different designations, so if you want to describe the colors that I'm using, the cinnamon, the burnt ochre is pretty self-explanatory, but the cinnamon I used is kind of like a medium flesh tone, and the light beige, light red beige is kind of like a light, light flesh tone, like a really light pinkish uh, color of the skin. And the ivory color that I use for the lightest bits is kind of like a yellowish uh, white, off-white color that that is just a little bit darker and just a little bit warmer than the regular white. Now moving on to the other eye and uh, first I'm going to draw some of the these uh, darker details using a black colored pencil because this, this uh, eye is 
more in the shadow it's more on the shadow side of the face but the shadows uh, on the face here are, are a little bit more complex as I'm going to explain a bit later um, <clears throat> as for this eye it's going to be a little bit darker overall than the one on the left and the eyeball itself is also going to appear a little bit darker so for the eye on the left I first used some white and then made uh, for the for the white of the eye I first used the white colored pencil and then added some value on top of that for the other one I'm going to use a slightly different approach uh, <clears throat> Now I'm working on the ear, adding some slightly darker and cooler tones here because the ear is going to be in the shadow, but some parts of the ear are sticking out and they're going to be catching some light. Um, just uh, drawing some uh, darker shadow areas around the face so that I could frame the face and so that it would be a little bit easier for me to navigate around the rest of the portrait. Uh, here I did, uh, realized that I did a little bit too much work on the face itself and I needed to go back and finish the left side of the background because like I said I like to work from left to right to minimize the smudging. So I'm going to do a little bit more work on these arrows to the left now that I see that the portrait is more or less uh, going pretty well. And I'm going to do the rest of the background here filling this in uh, with the green and uh, going around the arrows. We can't really see the quiver here, we can just see some of the arrows sticking out. And uh, the, the feathers of these arrows, I'm, uh, I'm drawing these with, a, uh, with, a, with an ivory colored pencil, but I also use a touch of white colored pencil on top of that as well. But it's mostly the ivory colored pencil and I mostly didn't worry too much about the exact shape and the exact edges first of all because you would expect slightly irregular shapes there and also because these two are slightly out of focus so the focus is on the face the head and everything else is kind of a part of the background so slightly blurry but you can't really achieve that blurry blurriness using uh, the blending tools alone you have to layer and sometimes even use a bit more pressure here and there. But the important thing is for me to cover these darker bits where uh, where the darker color of my of the background color of my paper is coming through. My paper is a uh, kind of bluish uh, bluish gray color and uh, maybe it's a little bit too dark but it works in a way because it allows you to create shadow areas more easily and it also allows you to create some textures more easily. Where it gives me trouble is usually with the backgrounds where, where the backgrounds are a little bit lighter and I have to cover them more thoroughly and I have to do a bit more blending. That's where I'm having a bit of a problem with these uh, darker colors of the sandpaper but it's not like I have a, a great choice of colors of sandpaper. Um, I, they, they're usually mostly grayish and I found that Priming them with watercolor or gouache doesn't really work that well because I lose a lot of the tooth even when I use lower grits of the paper. So I'm mostly comfortable with working on a 1000 grit sandpaper and I like uh, using it clean, not priming it with anything. I'm just trying to deal with some of the shortcomings uh, of, of this surface and try to find workarounds and trying to adapt to it as much as possible because I feel like it has a lot of potential uh, especially when it comes to creating very detailed color pencil drawings it, it allowed me to do things that I uh, couldn't really do on regular paper sandpaper is vastly superior to regular paper in my opinion because the colors are so much more vibrant, it's so much easier to blend them and layer them and it's so much easier to work from uh, dark to light which is pretty much impossible on regular paper. Anyway, I'm um, moving on to some of his clothes there as you can see around the neck. He has a couple of different scarves uh, from what I can see on my reference photos, some of them are more reddish, others more 
gray or maybe it's the same scarf but it's uh, in different colors and uh, it's really long wrapped around uh, wrapped around his head and uh, neck and shoulders continuing to work on this eye on the right here adding some shadow areas using some darker pencils and now some lighter details on the, on the eye itself so for the white of the eye I'm going to use a slightly different approach here I'm going to put down this darker color first it, well it's darker in comparison to white this is a light gray color but the reason why I put it down first is because I wanted this eye to be darker overall than the one on the left because it's in the shadow the eye socket is in the shadow it's getting more light it's getting less light actually from the light source and um, the catch light even though it's a little bit more subdued is also catching more light it is a it stands in a lot of contrast with the rest of the eye which is what I like because that really gives life to the eyes now I told you that the lighting was a little bit tricky and you can see that I'm now using this light beige on the right side of the face so let me try to explain what's going on here the light source is more on the more on the left side but it's also but the right side of the face is also catching some light from behind so you would say that, you could say that the darkest part of the face is the uh, the the area of the face which is just right of the center so the right eye and the right side of the face is a bit darker but then the temple area and the right cheek is catching some light from the from the other side and the same is going to be the case with the hair uh, the, the light is always uh, or in most cases is coming from above so all of the parts of the body and the face which are facing up are going to be a bit lighter and all, the, all of those which are facing down are going to have a little bit of shadow. There's a very nice shadow here going across the jaw area and now I'm shading the rest of this large area of the face using that burnt ochre that I used for my base color. The reason why I like this as a base color is because it has some tones that you can find in in the color of the skin like some um, yellowish and brownish and even some greenish elements if you will and when you combine it with some pinkish tones on top I think I'm getting a color that's very very close to the color of the skin of course the camera doesn't really capture uh, the exact colors as they look in real life uh, but uh, that's just the way it is the camera also doesn't capture all of the detail uh, the the focus and the quality of my footage varies a little bit sometimes it's not that great like for example now uh, sometimes it uh, refocuses a little bit or the lighting is a, a little bit better or the camera adapts to the lighting a little bit better and you can see the detail a bit better not really much I can do about that for now uh, but I'm hoping I can explain the drawing process to you as best as I can so I did a bit more work on the lips here adding some lighter tones on the lower lip using that light, light beige color and now I'm working a bit on this transition between the forehead area and the nose area uh, you could say the the dominant color uh, for for his skin tone for his face was the cinnamon was the cinnamon uh, colored pencil which I used on top of the burnt ochre and under the light beige but I find that this is the color that kind of dominates it's maybe a little bit too cool especially in combination with this uh, background the background color of the sandpaper but that's why this warmer burnt ochre uh, worked well as a base color which kind of modified uh, the tone of the skin and uh, the way that you can control uh, the 
the outcome of the layering and blending is by also controlling the, uh, the amount of pigment you put down and the amount of pressure you use because the way that you use your pencil can also make a difference. Sometimes it can allow you to graze over the lower layers underneath and just modify the color slightly and sometimes you can make a really uh, sharp strokes which uh, stand out in a lot of contrast against the against the layer underneath so it's up to you to decide how you want to approach it and it depends on what you're trying to achieve but just the way that you use your pencil can make a difference and this is just something that I'm learning to do as I'm practicing working on this uh, on this surface I imagine that if you're using a higher quality artist quality sanded papers you you will probably achieve similar results people tend to prefer pastel mat I've never I never tried that I never had that in my hands I never had an opportunity to see what it feels like in real life uh, they also say that UART is very similar to sandpaper so that would probably be the closest to the surface that I'm working on um, some people won't like the idea of working on regular sandpaper but uh, don't worry that this is a great surface for colored pencils it's very durable and uh, I strongly encourage you to experiment with it because you can create some great artwork now I added some some other reddish orangey tones to some parts of the face where I felt I needed some touches of warmer colors Uh, but that's kind of easy to do on this surface because it still has a, a lot of tooth left so that it can grab some uh, so that you can grab the pigment uh, also if you're wondering if this surface wears down the pencils very quickly these Faber Castell polychromos pencils they're kind of a little bit harder than most of the other pencils they're less crumbly uh, they're easier to sharpen so you can really get a lot out of them but the this surface does wear the pencils down a little bit quicker than regular paper but the advantage is that you are also able to fill in the tooth and, and get more vibrant colors more quickly so you don't have to spend as much time or as much energy um, layering and uh, just coloring trying to achieve certain colors because it's a lot easier it's a lot easier on a surface that really grips that pigment and allows you to create really strong vibrant colors and to blend them more easily because on this surface they do actually blend uh, because the the rough surface grinds down the material and then you can just sort of blend different colors together almost as, uh, as if you were painting in some cases but of course this is a dry medium so it's different there's a nice shadow uh, on the right side of the face going across that light area of the face uh, I'm mostly done with shading the face it's still going to need a few corrections here and there as you will see but uh, I am already almost ready to start working on the background to the right I'm just going back in with this light beige and adding some areas of lighter value or making the face a bit lighter where needed and maybe refining some of the edges adding a little bit of texture here and there although I already like the texture I produced So I'm, I'm now working a bit more on the background here to the right, adding some more of that green and adding some lighter areas on top of that. Blending these lighter colors on this surface, uh, which has a darker background color, can be a bit of a problem. 
but one of the things that helps is um, just uh, laying down the pencils first laying down the colors first and then blending them so and using brushes they tend to help when you want to make an area a bit smoother so I just went over some parts of the face and here adding some highlights here and there and now I need to do a bit more work on the hair to the right I'm putting down these darker areas first because I already explained that I find that highlights look a lot more natural when I pull I pull the lighter strokes on top of the darker ones when I put the lighter layers on top of the darker ones um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go back I'm gonna go back to drawing the hair a bit later and now I'm doing a bit more work on the clothes in the lower left corner now he's wearing an interesting uh, cape I think cape or rope whatever it is um, of some deep bluish dark bluish color I'm going to use this Prussian blue in combination with the black and see where that takes me there will also be some details and some insignia on that cape but I can't really make out what those are and I'm going to try to simplify it a bit. This area at the bottom here is pretty dark so I used a bit more of that silky black pencil which I, like I said is a bit darker than the Faber-Castell black. I used a bit of this light grey for the highlights and even some white around the edges but not too I didn't use too much pressure my goal was just to make it a little bit lighter because his shoulders which are facing the light source are catching a bit more light from above and now uh, we have some reddish reddish brown tones here on this part of the scarf the scarf also has a lot of folds which I'm trying to define using a black colored pencil and you can see that I've already drew some indications of folds using a black colored pencil and then I'm putting, in, putting the colors on top of that it also has some interesting textures I don't know if I can really reproduce the texture but it doesn't look exactly the same it doesn't have to look exactly the same I can just I can just uh, add a little bit of texture here and there, add a few details here and there and a few suggestions will probably make the cloth appear a lot more interesting and more complex. I'm just going over some of these shadow areas, reinforcing them with a little bit of a black colored pencil and now I'm going, uh, on, on top of that I'm going with a lighter colored pencil, uh, this is a light beige again to make the color a bit duller and to add more texture and to make it look more three-dimensional because I'm increasing the range of value and now I'm using some darker pencils to add some texture some of these lines um, to make it look like actual cloth and now moving on to the rest of the scarf like I said I, they're going to be of different color I don't know if it's uh, one and the same scarf that it's in multiple colors or maybe it's two different scarves I have no idea and I don't need to know that all I need to do is to try to understand what I see in my reference as best as I can and the reference of course is taken from a movie from the movie Robin Hood the Prince of Thieves which is the 90s version of the Robin Hood it's uh, some would say that it's not one of the greatest roles 
by Kevin Costner and some people didn't like this movie. I've seen it quite a number of times. I liked it. I think it's very entertaining. Much uh, worse movies made uh, are made nowadays. So uh, it, it wasn't that bad. I liked it, and I really liked this reference. So I decided to do this one. So like I said, maybe Kevin Costner had some better or more interesting roles. Like for example. Uh, I don't know what his name was, Ray Kinsella in the uh, Field of Dreams. I, I think that was the movie. Mm, but I just, like I said, I, I really like this reference photo and the, and the combination of colors especially. Now I'm going to do a little bit more work on the hair. You can see that I was working from, I was working from dark to light. I put down some dark areas using a black colored pencil then I put some brown areas using mostly a raw umber and now I'm using beige on top of that for some of the lighter hairs sticking out catching light from above and they're kind of getting lighter and lighter and I'm getting these layers of hairs uh, you can feel like these uh, hairs which are sitting on top of the others are a bit lighter because the, the ones underneath are in the shadow and uh, I'm making, I, I'm giving that hair a lot more depth by adding these strokes of lighter value on top of the darker ones. This is a very natural way for me to draw hair and it feels easier, a lot easier and more natural than when you have to draw highlights by using your erasers, for example, when you're working with charcoal. Now, for some of the lightest hairs here on the edge, on the right, I'm going to use an ivory colored pencil again working with that on top of the light beige and the other darker colors that I already used. So you can see you can put in a few layers on this surface. You can, the tooth of the paper allows, allows you to put a few layers but of course you have to make sure that you didn't burnish it or you didn't press too hard or didn't put down too much pigment in the first layer. But uh, you, you, there are limits, but you can put a few layers in there. I don't know how uh, much better the lower grits would behave, like for example uh, 800 grit or 600 grit. Uh, I found that the 800 is pretty similar to this 1000 grit. Now the lower ones I think maybe are a little bit too rough for colored pencils maybe it would be a little bit too uh, a little bit difficult to achieve clean lines uh, clear details and smooth smooth uh, blending and smooth transitions between areas of lighter and darker value but like i said i didn't i i just prefer this 1000 grit and that's what i like to work on most of the time i'm adding some warm, uh, touches of warmer color to this uh, grayish part of the scarf and now I'm adding some texture to it to make the material appear a bit more realistic. So back to talking about the movie. Um, I like the movie like I said even though it's not perfect. Um, in some in some places it's maybe a little bit too comical um, I don't know, Alan Rickman's character of the Sheriff of Nottingham was a little bit too goofy maybe, I don't know, but uh, the leading actors mostly did a good part, Morgan Freeman, Kevin Costner, and some others. Of course there are, there, there are some things I don't like about these historical movies which, uh, um, there, there are some distortions of historical events that you can see in almost all Robin Hood movies like for example the way they talk about the Crusades which were mostly defensive and reactive in nature and they usually describe them as a useless bloodshed and plundering which is not really what happened and um, there are some other things like for example um, making Robin Hood look like a thief who who steals from the rich and gives to the poor when in fact 
he was uh, rebelling against uh, high taxes. So these are two completely different things, but some people perhaps don't really see the difference, but it doesn't really matter. It's neither here nor there. It's uh, mostly an entertaining movie, and you can just ignore some of the stuff you don't like. Like I said, in comparison to some of the movies that are made nowadays, this was, this was actually a pretty good movie. There are some interesting details here on, on his uh, robe or, or his cape, whatever that is. Can't really make out what they are. I don't really know what they are. I'm just going to wing it a little bit. I'm not a big fan of drawing clothes and details and things like that. So I'm just going to simplify it a little bit because I like to focus on things like the face and uh, the hair. and Those are the things that I, I like to focus on in my drawings. This is a portrait after all. I didn't want to make it a vignette because neither of the portraits in my series is going to be a vignette. So I'm doing a bit more of the background and more of the clothes. But uh, there's still no reason why I shouldn't simplify certain things which I don't feel are that important. I'm doing a bit more work on the background here, I'm just uh, blending a little bit, making it a little bit smoother, maybe a little bit lighter in some areas, adding some more of those lighter round shapes where the light is coming through. Like I said, this is an out of focus, bokeh background, so I don't really need to worry about any specific shapes. Uh, it's mostly done. I'm just going to be doing some refining now, putting down some finishing touches. I'm going to put my signature in the lower left part of the drawing here, just above his right shoulder. And I hope we won't bother anybody over there. Now normally when you put down your signature you're supposed to put the pencils down but sometimes I just notice some of the things that need to be corrected like for example some of the distortions and some of the asymmetry in your um, in your portrait. One of the things that I like to do is I like to look at my drawing in a mirror or step away from it a few meters and that actually helps me notice some of the distortions and some of the mistakes which need to be corrected. Of course, I don't expect it to look perfect, but uh, I felt that there were still some things which could look a little bit better, like, for example, this transition between the nose and the, and the forehead area and the, the eyes themselves. I made some corrections there to make them look a bit more symmetrical, and uh, I tried to improve the shading around the eyes and the eye sockets a little bit. But... Uh, this is what it looks like. The drawing is finished here. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, if you want to see longer videos, you should check out my Patreon, where you'll find, find full-length footage. And also, don't forget to subscribe here, give me a like and comment. I want to thank you for watching, and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.